show. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to try to develop you with. One, Larry Summers uh, talks about inflation in Japan and China, I think. Uh, both those countries, um, they both have inflation less than us. Their inflation is less than us before we opened up. And the reason why is because they spent far more uh, in the house than they have outside the house because they they are the manufacturing countries of the world. Um, I think uh, China has been doing more. I think China, maybe it's Japan, too. You know? Anyways, so basically, um, all parts of Asia have been doing way more exporting to places like Russia, UK, and other places. They include energy, commodities, stuff like that. US, however, has been busy under Trump and continuously under uh, Biden selling oil overseas, uh, which was meant for year. Um, that was started under Trump. Um, that created price inflation here in the energy market. Um, and yeah, there's a tweet out there and I've shared it many, many times with, uh, of um, Trump um, basically like boasting about talking to Saudi Arabia, who also purchased a BP uh, gas refinery facility in Texas. Um, he didn't stop that. That was in 2017. That was, uh, that was reported by CNN back then, which I didn't even know about until recently. Kind of follow those son of a guns. Anyway, um, so that happened, and Trump deciding to uh, start selling the reserves we have here uh before this was before um pandemic so either way acting really stupid um also put sanctions on everybody other than russia so that also meant that uh goods and services would be at taxed anyway uh then you have uh then you have the 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 um the, the uh, tax breaks for many, many millionaires and billionaires and other things. That's a tax expenditure, according to the IRS. So that's not money coming in at all. Um, it was around this time that I was like, how in the world are we affording to be able to, just before I, I realized, this is before I knew about MMT and uh, other uh, ac uh, macroeconomic types. Um, anyway, so... Uh, so I, I was wondering about that, and I was like, okay, well, what, what's a deficit? Because I, I grew up thinking deficits were bad or, you know, didn't know really what deficits were. Uh, I just knew that Clinton had um, brought down the deficit and paid off the quote-unquote debt. Uh, finding out that deficit spending is actually spending into, you know, spending money into the economy. So people like myself, you and everybody else who consumes – and don't have and doesn't have uh, any money in bonds, treasury, you know, at least enough to live on, you know, that sort of thing. Because those do actually have uh, quite significant uh, interest rates, even back in the nineties, it did. Anyway, so my point here is, um, my point here is, Larry Summers should never be listened to. Uh, he was the architect behind the uh, campaign against. Uh, regulating derivatives uh he was he was uh he was for deregulation and uh repeal of glass steagall all the all the things that he's done that i've seen has only benefited uh people in his community in his ilk if you will and has basically effed us from the from the 90s to now because he was also in obama and uh and biden's ear as president and vice president to limit the stimulus uh, that we got during the 2007-2008 crisis uh, when he got in 2008. Um, that limited the scope of stimulus that people got and therefore did not allow us to recover in a better way. So then you, you had all that, um, plus uh, still tax breaks and then you had the uh, we had AC was it ACA no uh, that's yeah yeah ACA, which basically just allowed more money to go to the insurance companies. Uh, nothing nothing for Medicare for all, you know stuff of that nature. Uh, despite the fact that Obama ran on hope and change, 
I was hoping he would change by 2011 or 2012. I mean, uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, the point being is Larry Summers was in his ear and talked him down from, uh, from doing more. Um, Larry Summers should never, I mean, never, ever, ever be listened to on anything relating to financial. Uh, given the fact that uh, Milton Freeman's theory of quantity of money, uh, even he in 2003 uh, said that he was wrong and that he wouldn't push it as hard. I'm guessing he would be pushing it as hard because he got paid for it. He got paid to, to do that because... It was uh, it, it was basically on behalf of the financial uh, financial industry anyway. Uh, so anyway, so Milton Freeman was proven to be wrong. Uh, Keynesian, as far as the mainstream economics, that's not MMT. Uh, he was the closest to being right, and he was for more. He, he was for focused spending, which is good because that's what you need to grow an economy. You don't need to take out the money before everything else is, you know, up to snuff and, and at a balance, if you will. Um, anyway, so there's that. Uh, let's see what else? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm I'm watching the interview, and I'm I'm like, you're dead wrong about ninety percent of what you're saying right now because there's one part that he actually got right. And that was that China is a sovereign currency. It's a sovereign country. It creates and spends and taxes in its own currency. It does not need to borrow anything. It's only allowing investment, outside investments, just like the United States does. It's not borrowing from anything. It's not borrowing from anyone. I showed you the thing from yesterday as far as how many countries have U.S. treasuries that pay interest rates every six or so months. Uh, that is literally the Fed giving countries financial or fiscal expansionary help, uh, just like it does here. Um, that's what the largest economy in the world does or can do, and it's doing it right now as far as that part goes. MMT for me is a way of seeing this. It's kind of what, like George Carlin said, the, they're part of a club, but you ain't a part of it. Well, MMT kind of gives you a window to see what it looks like, how to get into it, if you so choose to, and if you, and if you so uh, know, I guess know enough about it to be able to, to play in the market and stuff of that nature. Anyway, my ultimate point being is MMT is the only uh, economic uh system that I see that can work because every single time someone wants to criticize it is based on stuff that's not actually MMT and not has anything to do with what MMT is about. Um anyway, so let me pause this and I'll go to what I was wanting to go. Okay, I'm going to attempt to show you the interview that, he, that Larry Summers was doing on Bloomberg. Uh or yeah, 24th, I'm sorry, 24th. And this is the first time I've actually, not the first time I've seen it, but the first time I realized it's from, from the 24th or yesterday. Anyway, so let me take a look. When it comes to Asia, Larry, we both have the end of the Party Congress over in China. We're trying to figure out what that leads to. And also Japan, we have Bank of Japan coming out with a ruling. What are you looking at? Uh, David, I'm going to be watching Japan very carefully. Uh, they've got the highest inflation on some measures in uh more than uh, 25 uh, years. They've got a yen that really has fallen off uh, a, great, uh, a great deal. And I think by some measures, you're sort of in unprecedented territory in the last uh, 40 years, if you recognize how much lower their inflation uh, has been. So what's going to be the path of monetary policy and what is well, there he was tying the uh, he was saying the yen is fallen because of interest rates. It's actually fallen, I think, because of the sanctions that happened on Russia and because their stuff is actually more expensive to ship. So just like with us and us having you know paying for exports imports, it's decreased the value of our currency just like it's decreased their current uh, the value of their currency is uh due to our our interest rates in regards to uh how much how much things are costing them to ship 
uh, even though the cost of shipping has gone down, it probably hasn't gone down to the point where their yen actually balances out as far as the value, the core value anyway. <laughs> Uh, see, and still, again, there. If you notice that he didn't go into numbers of inflation, he just says bigger is the biggest in twenty five years. Well, our inflation has been big; it's been big for the past forty years. The only difference is, uh, we are just going through pandemic, so a lot of the inflation is coming back either way. Uh, and it has nothing to do with monetary. Uh, it has nothing to do with money as, as per se, but monetary policy by the government and sanctions and not allowing wages to go up and, you know, uh, deregulation and stuff of that nature. That's the reason we're experiencing so much inflation right now. Well, some, a couple of the reasons anyway, but let's go back with this and see if I can. Is it uh, going to mean those are going to be very big questions? Their kind of QE, so-called yield curve control, is one of those policies whenever you peg things. Uh, whether it's an exchange rate or the interest rate or you stabilize the price of a commodity, it's always easier to begin stabilizing it by saying the government's committed to maintaining a price than figuring out how to manage the situation when you no longer want to be committed to that price. So not so much over the next week. I think he just admitted that inflation is the cause for the decline in value of the currency. I think I just heard that. Let's see if I can get back to that. Situation when you no longer want to be committed to that price. Oops. So not no. so much over than figuring out how to manage the situation when you no longer want to be committed to that price. So not so much over the next week, but over the next uh, period, I'm going to be watching Japan uh, very carefully because there's been a lot of borrowing money uh, in Again, borrowing is literally investment into the into the uh, country. If you look up the the uh, companies that have been have started to invest in either companies in China, and Japan, or uh, invested in production in that country and that's what i'm thinking he's referring to it's not borrowing anything in japan to finance things all over the world and so if japanese interest rates uh, start to change uh that could be a pretty big deal so yeah uh first he at least admitted the fact that their i think their interest rates um are the reason for their yen going down same thing for us I mean, it makes it, it makes the uh, interest rates overall makes the prices of all goods and services go up. Uh, that's what it does as far as up part goes. And it, I mean, that's that's why yesterday, if you if you watch the sh if you watch or listen to the show, you'll notice I said that it works on both ways. Interest goes into U to uh, the U.S. Treasuries and also other Treasuries around the world, investors. That that the interest rate itself it pays the interest of of that to those U.S. Uh, securities or outside securities. I mean, it's a savings account. That's quite what literally what the what that is. Um, and anyway, actually here in Ohio, uh, the Democratic uh, uh, mayor wants to uh, pass uh, three or four different uh, initiatives to invest in bonds. The problem with that is, as far as I'm concerned, bonds in cities and states are a, are a like a, uh, what do you call that, uh, interest-bearing uh, savings account or interest, uh, not interest, I'm sorry, investment tool for outside uh ventures like outside companies coming in and be able to purchase land uh land or stuff of that nature so it's not like you know they're trying to get in-house corporations in-house companies they they are trying to bring in investment outside of the state to invest for i'm guessing for uh for uh tax uh, tax um uh incentives 
So I don't know how I'll be voting on that. What I do know is one of the things that's not on the uh, short list for funding is mental health or mental uh, or a mental health service uh, was on there is uh, new money for cops, new money for, oh, let me see if I can get it actually, let me pause this so I can find that. Okay, so hey, uh, just a little um, insight of my world as far as this part goes. This is what I'm referring to. Yeah, so let's see. The uh, governor, no, mayor of Columbus wants to, wants to have uh bonds passed or issued uh to uh help in by investing uh 200 million in affordable housing for columbus just to make it easier for people to buy homes um actually i have a problem with chase bay bank because of uh, because of something of that nature i'll explain in the moments uh a bond issue also invests 300 million in public safety and 200 million for parks and recreation uh, so there's like looks like five different bonds that uh, that are up for a vote, and I believe one of them is uh, for more cops. I think I saw. Let's see. Da, 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 what? Man, I thought I saw that. But okay, yeah, man, on, on a different flyer, it's, it said uh, to hire more cops. And the problem I see with all of that is. As far as I'm concerned, that's not going to be taxpayer money uh, in uh, state and state and lo local taxes. Uh, a lot of the stuff as far as the how the 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 housing, uh, I do believe, and also uh, a lot of the um, parks and recreation will be probably more likely funded from outside investment, not inside investment, or to, at the very least is going to, is going to make it. Um, like I think, for, like for instance, uh, there's a park up here called Schiller Park that has a gym in the uh, in the rec center. The gym that the 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 gym in the rec center is a city pro is city owned, uh, which I'm assuming also means that it's corporate owned as well. Because um, as far as I know about, uh, it's not Snap. What the heck is it called? I forgot what the, I forgot what it's called. But uh, anyway. Uh, the point of the matter is, I I just think that none of the taxpayer dollars will be going into that, and and I mean taxpayer at a local and state uh, level, not federal, uh, because taxes don't fund uh, federal spending. Spending uh, funds taxes on a federal level, not state federal level. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, anyway, so as far as cheese goes, uh, cheese. Uh, has a thing where if you put a down payment of X amount of dollars, it will uh, do a closed down amount of 2500 That's cool. It has three levels of that uh, FHA, uh, Federal Housing Authority. Uh, that's part of the program with them as well. But the one thing I have a problem with, and, and as I said, uh, MMT, tries, MMT looks at both areas of, of economics both liability side and asset side liability side is basically you know uh, um, bills or not bills shoot um money owed money owed to the bank money owed to a creditor a, a you know someone like that uh, where a liability where an asset is where you can sell it rent it whatever like that's why real estate is is looked at more of a capital gains asset. Anyway, so my point here is, uh, it has a no limit on income. To me, that tells me that people of higher income can take advantage of that, uh, crowding out smaller income individuals. And I think that's the reason why right now in, in a lot of markets. Uh, rents are going down because the the landlords, the real estate uh, agents can't sell those properties. They can't sell off, you know, cheaper properties because a lot of the more expensive uh, areas that are not gentrified. Uh, 
haven't been, people can't afford to do you know rent them or not rent them but uh to uh to buy them and to rent them so a lot of a lot of renters are getting lower rents which is good but that also means that more than the not so expensive places have been bought off at a higher market rate um so i don't like that I, I don't like the lack of limitations on that. It should be for either first-time homeowners or for lower income, uh, lower income um, people as far as the park goes. But yeah, I, that's the one part because it it leads to it it will lead to too much manipulation of the housing market through that because real estate companies and bigger businesses much rather go in, start renting somewhere and have everything up to par as far as payments, eventually buying, buying into the property, but at the same time saving money because they actually have enough backing to be able to keep up the mortgage rates, keep up the payments and all the other stuff and shoot up the rents on anybody else who wants to rent. So I don't see that as being beneficial to anybody other than people of a higher income. So I'm kind of... That that kind that kind of peeves me just thinking about that again. That's what MMT helps me realize that kind of thing. Otherwise, before I wouldn't have really thought twice about it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there anymore. If you want to learn more about MMT, about modern monetary theory, one you can go to uh you go on this channel and go lower. I I started my uh textbook MMT on this channel um one through i think 10 or so then i went to audio and i took it to my patreon so you can also so for the rest you, you have to pay at least a dollar to listen to the audio version of my textbook mmt again that's uh patreon.com slash you down with mmt there's no question marks is the word anyway but thanks for watching thanks for listening um next time you hear anybody anybody that, that was involved in a crisis of any kind, shut them up. Shut them down. Don't watch, don't listen, because they don't know shit for shit, and uh, it's because they know shit for shit that everything went to shit. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, so uh, thanks for listening. Listen to people like Warren Mosler, Mike Norman, uh, Steve Grumbine, uh, people like that, Stephanie Kelton, uh, Steve Keen. Those people, they know their shit. And a lot of the stuff they went into hasn't turned to shit. Uh, and yet they have they, they have less of a market value than the, a, well, not market value, but a uh, following, if you will, of a, a the, uh, the mainstream economist out there, the bullshit artist. Art, artist? Artist. Anyways, peace out for now. Uh, yeah, yeah, peace out for now. Have a night. Break If you're going to go after the rich and the oligarchs, then you've essentially agreed to their terms, which is if you want a little bit more of our wealth to have your little Medicare for all and all of the other social programs, then by definition, we need to have the capacity to generate even more wealth and power and influence so you can tax a little bit of it to have your little Medicare for all. So you've agreed to their position of power, to their terms of the debate, and you've just agreed to make them more powerful, more influential, which means you've agreed that they will not give you what you want. North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. We're gonna pay for it. We're gonna be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you gonna find the money?